So this practical is uh, Y7, the preparation of phenol acetate. An organic transformation, the phenol um, is placed with sodium hydroxide to take the proton off the phenol to form a phenoxide, which is nucleophilic attack towards the carbonyl group and elimination of the ethanoate group to form the ester. So the reaction, as we see here, there's a reaction, then there's a wick up and there's a purification. And this student started already uh, to take phenol as 4.7 grams and placed with 2 molar sodium hydroxide at 40 mil in a 250 mil round bottom flask, adding crushed ice and then carefully acetic anhydride, which should be probably done in a few months, will stop the flask and carefully shake the contents for 5 minutes. So we see the student weighing the mass of the phenol out here I'm going to move this forward slightly the students moving through here so the student is measuring out a mass of phenol as we see four point seven grams weighed out placing it into the round bottom flask then the student is going to take quantities of the sodium hydroxide. So we'll see the student do that. The sodium hydroxide is going to be measured out into a measuring cylinder and then to be placed in to the flask. So the student is going to do that. So the demonstrator is getting involved there. The sodium hydroxide is poured out. Where the student goes. Eye level, pouring it into the flask as we see. And then a quantity then of ice, crushed ice is then added. So a beaker or dish of ice. That's to be weighed out. Let's see what's happening here. So the students are going to take uh, some of the ice, wear the beaker beforehand, place the ice in, dry the beaker as well if you can. So maybe the 4DP balance is not enough to go to an alternative balance at that point. If your mass has flunked out, so to go towards an alternative balance. So measured ice. Okay, this student's happy with that, measuring his ice out, maybe weighing the beaker beforehand, and then he's going to place the ice into the flask, as we see. And there we go, the ice is in. So scooping the ice maybe with a spatula, or place it with a hand, but maybe a spatula. Yeah, properly stop it and give it a shake and making sure the pressure doesn't build up. So shake like that for five minutes. And then the work up then, the mixture needs to be placed into a, a set funnel and extracted with DCM. So we'll move this forward here. Are well, the students happy with that? So now the step funnel comes out, clamped into onto the stand. Again, make sure the key rotates and will not leak. And then we're going to see the student hopefully place a quantity of ice in there. So you just put it in, uh, maybe you have a funnel and wash down into the funnel with the DCM or you don't pour it and pour it over the sides of here. So I'd probably like to see we will wide net funnel pouring this in here. So wide net funnel pouring this in and then you're going to wash with three lots of 20 mil DCM. So use some of the DCM, that 20 mil to rinse around the funnel and rinse the contents of the flask out with a pipette. So transfer in. See what's going on here, right? Let's just go back. That's my mistake, my mistake, my mistake. So we'll see 20 ml of DCM being poured out. So the student's going to add the DCM into the 
into the flask. There we go, that student's rinsing around the contents of the flask with some of that 20 ml. So take this with pasta pipette, rinse it out, take it out with a pipette and put it in. If you have a funnel here, you rinse some of the contents of the funnel with some of the DCM. But this student clearly is now aware of transferring all his material over with some of the DCM you've got. Swirling it in, and then the students will place this into here. Let's see the student do this. So the student then, before putting the stopper onto the set funnel, should take some DCM and wash the neck of that. Uh, separatory funnel so the, the stopper doesn't stick on and you transfer all the organics into the flask. So just as our previous video and our previous lab for this module uh, the stopper will go on and the students hopefully are going to place a peak underneath and it's going to swirl. Let's see the student do that. There you go swirling it making sure to vent the flask Making sure the student vents the flask nicely away from his face and other workers venting nicely hand over the stopper so the stopper doesn't pull out and the contents of the flask over one's hand and on bench. This is good. So the student allows it to settle. And just to point out here, DCM and water, the student needs to collect the bottom DCM layer. So the student gets to eye level, his friend is here, working here collecting the bottom DCM layer into an appropriate beaker or hopefully the demonstrator which is a, a lady called Nicola will hand back an, a conical or an Erlenmeyer flask yep I like that oh no no the beaker but collect it in a beaker or a conical or an Erlenmeyer flask the bottom DCM layer goes into here the top layer stays into the set funnel so you do that um, three times and then you're going to set the aqueous layer apart uh, so this will go into a lake, aqueous, uh, uh, labelled beaker for aqueous layer. And then the combined organics are going to be placed back into the beaker, uh, sorry, the separatory funnel, with, and then washed with sodium hydrogen carbonate. But see here, perfectly two layers, top aqueous layer, bottom DCM layer. So I'm going to move the video through until this point, until we uh, are now going to wash with sodium hydrogen carbonate. So moving forward here, the student now has got the sodium hydrogen carbonate and the three lots of DCM 20 mil into the set funnel, swirling away and then venting here. Now this will produce a fizz, a release of CO2 gas, so you'll hear large hissing notions here. But the student is swirling the flask, keeping the hand on the stopper and swirling the mixture out. So when the student closes the flask, so we're just going to move back. So here the student's going to place the flask in here and I'm just going to pause it because we will be down at this part, so pausing it. So once washing with the hydrogen carbonate, the bottom layer is the DCM layer. So the bottom layer here needs to go into an Erlenmeyer flask and to be dried with sulfate and then filtered off under gravity using fluted filter paper into a pre-weighed flask, which is then going to go onto a rotary evaporator. We're going to see the student hopefully do this. So the student is taking the bottom DCM layer after washing with bicarb. See how clear it is. Run it into a flask. Taking some of the mag sulfate. So taking the mag sulfate and again going to dry this 60 mil of DCM and the organic phenyl acetate. So again the student is going to put mag sulfate in one to two scoops until it floats very gently and the student is going to put into a rotary evaporatory flask pre-weighed
giving it a swirl and stir. Taking this away. Right, there you go. I'll just move this forward or back ever so slightly. Stopping it. So, very bottom flask, weighed, clamped into position, filter funnel, filter paper fluted, pouring it in, wash the beaker with some DCM, wash the mag sulfate off the filter funnel, collect into the flask. So we'll move this forward and this flask then is then going to go onto a rotary evaporator. So there's the flask and the flask then is going to head towards a rotary evaporator. So this, no, probably the student's doing a little bit more. So let's get this to the students venturing now towards the rotary evaporator in the teaching labs which will be in area one towards the window we would hope many years ahead they could be moved and the students now going to use the rotary evaporator so let's go to this so now onto a rotary evaporator so we don't use a steam bath because our lab facilities have the use of a rotary evaporator so the students is putting the flask onto the rotary evaporator C. Uh, the vacuum being formed so the, the, the flask is clipped on and secured by clips and spun and lowered into a pre uh, a, a, a thermostat controlled water bath and we're going to see the students working here with the rotary evaporators spinning around and the solvents coming off and this should give a uh, the, the the minimum mass or the mass of recovered phenyl acetate which is then going to be purified by this step. So we'll just pause here. But we're going to set up now for purification on this part. It says to go to page 70. So we'll move to page 70. So we need, this is old fashioned here, so don't need to heat it at Bunsen burn on a gauze, tripod and gauze. So we've got a heating mantle and the heating blocks we're replacing this element. And we're going to have a round bottom flask or maybe a pear shaped glass with either bumping granules in, so you could have anti-bumping granules or a magnetic flea. These students use a magnetic flea, which is fine. Then we have the still head, which is shown here. We have the thermometer, thermometer and adapter, which is shown here. And the thermometer's in, and notice that the bulb is on the middle part of the still head, where it goes into the condenser. So the condenser, the students clip together, and that's nice. So the condenser, and then we've got the receiver here, clipped together. And you'll have water so you'll have water going in from the bottom so the water tap would feed in to the bottom part of the condenser leaving is another tube which will feed into the sink so what you're asked to do when you set this up we will go back to this is to transfer to a 25 mil flask using two small proportions of dcm so we see our students working away so he's got his recovered material from the rotary evaporator so this student is just pouring it in i'm going to pause there i would like you all as chemists to use a pipette and to transfer over by the pipette and then to rinse out your quantity of a, a, a phenyl acetate which is still residual on the inside of the flask with these two small portions of dcm now this student pouring it in this way could lose some of the material on the outside of the flask but the student may then also have phenyl acetate onto the neck of the flask, which will go onto the still head joint. And this presents problems for the academic staff and demonstrators for some students, as when things are heated together and necks and joints are not cleaned, then it's like a gloy and things stick together. And we don't want that, so I'm going to encourage you to use a pipette to transfer it over into the flask, to wash the inside out with some DCM, to pipette over, and a little trace of DCM onto the neck of the flask, some towel paper to clean the neck of the flask and to situate with the still head. So this student's working away and we make sure that the student's ready. And we'll move through this, the student's doing it this way. So you see the student's transferring with some DCM and he's going to hopefully take some of this out. So he's still swirling it and placing it in and dunking it into the neck. I'd rather you pause again, have a pipette a pipette and transfer in so I'd like you to transfer with pipettes making sure that's clean 
So we'll move forward. So the student's place there. Just go back one frame. Just pause. So the student set his um, system up like this. So the heating mantle, stirrer bar. So still head, that's clamped, clipped and clipped. So the water needs to go in from the tap to the bottom and leave through the, through the top. So we'll hopefully see the student putting the condensers together. So the, the, these students, I'm going to point this out, these students are actually doing this without water. Now, um, you know, you can get away with some distillation without water coming in, but I, I, if I was here, I'm going to point this out, this needs to be water in and water out. So the students who have done this haven't done this in the correct, well, the correct manner I would like. Uh, so they're going to set up for distillation. So you're asked to distill the mixture, gently heating, so notice that's around about 100 degrees, uh, 6 or 7 on the setting, 100 degrees I would say on the heating mantle. So the boiling point of the products is over 100 degrees C. So distill the mixture using the distillation apparatus, heat gently until the solvent's been removed. So take off the traces of DCM, so DCM would boil at 40 degrees, so set it to 345. You'll see traces of DCM come down and collect into a beaker and a smaller volume and then you can really probably move the thermometer up higher in temperature or well not the thermometer the setting so move it up higher in temperature to get the phenyl acetate off so the student we will see is is heating away like we see here and collecting the first drops of dcm into the beaker and that beaker would then be sacrificed so place then a known receptacle under here, either vials of known uh, weight, so you pre-weigh them, or beakers of, of pre-weight uh, pre as well, so you will wear them. So this is how you would then um, collect, and when you've got the boiling point, obviously the bulb of the thermometer is level with the joint of the still head. Record the math by eyesight, um, obviously your visual interpretation of the, of the thermometer setting. And this is how you would purify it at that point. So once you've got your recovered masses, don't allow that to boil dry. Speak to the demonstrating team or, or to myself. Don't allow that to boil dry. So allow some residual half a mil, mil, mil and a half of liquid to stay in the bottom. If the temperature on the thermometer drops, all the pure distillators come off and switch this off and raise it up to allow it to cool. And then go and recover record weights of your vials, pre-recorded weights, known recovered mass into the vial after distillation. You will work out your mass with your boiling point range and then go and record, as it asks you here, some infrared spectra. And if you can, well, maybe we have the facilities at Salford to do it at uh, first year level, we will do NMR as well. Okay, so this is um, this is our next practical, which is Y7, uh, the preparation of phenyl acetates, and I shall ever stop here. Thank you.